So a lot of my videos are basically insomnia type of videos. They're not really insomnia videos. What it is is that I fall asleep at like, like no joke, like six o'clock at night, and I'll wake up at like twelve thirty, maybe get back sleep for one hour, and I just stare looking at the ceiling, trying to go to sleep, and I think, oh, I know, I'll make a YouTube video. I really don't get anybody who watches these things, but I still make them, and then I listen to them. See how I sound. See if I make sense with what I'm thinking about. That's like the main reason why I make YouTube videos. But anyways, yesterday when I went into work at 5 a.m. I work at a gas station. I'm an assistant manager in training. I'm almost done with the training time period. Um, we had our other assistant manager quit. So I kind of stepped into something that is something you do after training. But I needed to do it. Anything you do is learning um, different systems, different procedures um and so showing up at 5 a.m on sunday uh the graveyard shift person is not the five day a week graveyard shift person she's the two times a week graveyard shift person and this thing happened last weekend where the day before the other person who's been trained as an assistant manager and basically could manage the whole place um, but she has another job and can't do the specific hours that our business requires. Um, and so really knows everything about the business. Showed um, the person does two nights a week graveyard shift how to do the day close. And that's this thing where you close your shifts normally. And there's two parts to closing a shift. It's closing the safe. It's closing the cash register. And you have to reconcile both of those. You count down to $50. You make sure to pay back the vault if you bought any money from the safe and didn't give it didn't pay for it um and then you have to drop the rest of your cash and so there's safe drops and vault drops and there's these two different numbers on your safe report and then the safe drops have to match up with your cash uh that you've taken into the register so that you're it shows you you know you know you didn't not collect money or you didn't collect too much money or you didn't steal money Whatever, it just shows that the numbers are equal. So, um, and any amount over or under is your over or under. So you do that. And then also at the end of the day, which this is what happened the last th three weeks. The first week I did it perfectly right because I did um, the day close as the graveyard shift person myself on Friday and Saturday night for like a year and three months. Every every weekend I did this thing. Like the first few weeks I had it off kilter. So the person who's there now, I mean, sh she had some stuff off kilter. And I was trying to go through it with her. But thinking about it backwards from like learning all the new paperwork that assistant managers and managers do the same paperwork in the morning. And you have to have paperwork submitted. You have to reconcile all the other invoices for like Pepsi, Coca-Cola, Frito-Lay, McLean does theirs automatically. We use PDI, um, and then you have fuel reports, and there's this little thing called a Vitor meter. They used to stick a stick down in the tanks, and you read the inches of how far the stick goes down, um, and you can still do that, and actually the delivery guys do that. Sometimes, some guys do it always, because they're just old school, and they want to do the double measuring, so they measure the inches of the stick, and then they also take a Vitor meter reading inside. Vitor meter is just uh, what they call a little meter that tells you how much gas of each different gas type you have in each of your underground tanks, whatever you have. Um, and then, so this all gets reconciled in PDI and there's some stuff you have to count by hand to cross check to see if what went through the register that went to PDI, like Lotto, you have to, um, you have to actually, like lottery, the scratchers, you have to count the scratchers and do a reconciliation of how many you have still. That's your true count. And then your register tells you how many you sold because you have to scan them up because they have a barcode. So you reconcile those and you reconcile your physical cigarette counts. But um, there will be like, there will be a payout number that you did pay out from the register but then you have to see what it what the lotto machine says so the lotto machine prints out what you're supposed to pay out but that's not electronically communicated over to the register so there's all these little things you have to do so i'm i showed up yesterday and the week before for some reason 
um, since the other person who's the trained assistant manager manager who knows the whole business system showed the two times a week graveyard shift person how to do the day close. When I showed up last weekend, she said, oh, I did the day close. And I just, I didn't look at the paperwork that she printed. I said, oh, okay. So then we just have to, uh, like, moving right along. We had, I had this other set of paperwork I had to do from a day before. I was doing a back paperwork because we only have a two-day window to get all the paperwork done and submitted. It all goes to our office in Ohio. There's like 4,000 gas stations uh, for Speedway was just bought by 7-Eleven, which has like 1,400 gas stations. So now it's, you know, fi I mean like 5,500 gas stations that are corporate managed. 7-Eleven has 11,000 other C-store slash potentially gas stations attached to them. But those are franchise stations. That's how those numbers work. 7-Eleven gained this big amount of corporate owned and operated uh, gas station convenience stores by buying Speedway. Um, but so, you know, that's where I work. So, I mean, climbing the little corporate ladder, I'm at the first rung at assistant manager or the management ladder, not corporate quite, quite however you think about that. So, I didn't look at the paperwork. So, we're our, our numbers were way off, but it bounced. There's this thing called bouncing back, but it's not. Some people will do it so often, it like, it'll make somebody up the chain mad. When they look at the paperwork, they're just like, you guys need to be accurate every day. You know, you can't bounce back one day. You have to be more like Johnny on the spot about things like what I then did yesterday. So I showed up yesterday at 5 a.m. and said, okay, so let's close the safe. Because I didn't close the safe the weekend before. That's what we didn't do. We only did the day end on the cash register. So <laughs> I closed the safe right away. You have to drop, do the last safe drop from getting the cash register closed before you can close the safe day. Um, you don't have to be all the way done. I was trying to skip a step because what you can do is you can count down to 50 and have your safe drop ready. What you can do is you can show up and you can open a separate cash register and you can take just debit or credit from that one. And then you can have the other person count down to 50 and make their safe drop. And then you can end the safe day and then the other person can take their sweet time doing their end of shift. Um, but they're, I mean, they should also do their shift uh, safe close and then do the day safe close and then they can take their time. Um, you know, there's really not much to do at that point. Once you've counted down, that's all you're really supposed to do. So it, it, what I was doing just was like overthinking what part I could skip over, like, 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 you know, juggling cups with a ball under it. Like, you don't need to do that. All you're supposed to do is show up and do the shift cash register close and the shift safe close, right? You get those two done. And then and you can open the other register and just pay, take debit or credit right then. Like, count in and then be there doing debit or, debit or credit only. And we're closing this one. We can't take cash right now. People are happier about that depending on how long you take to do the thing. So, and then do, so do that other shift close and then do the day close right when there's no one on the gas pumps. Do the day close on the cash register after you've already done the day close first on the safe. And then as soon as you hit day close, you need to run and hit a meter meter printout so that you have the exact amount of gas for the exact amount of money that's gone through the commander PD uh, cash register system and then you have the exact day safe so your numbers are exact maybe your numbers are off because you guys were up or down on your different shifts you know gave someone a candy bar and didn't collect the money or something or just miscounted one thing I did all the first part of the year was um, I work Friday and Saturday and then I'd have so I, I work until Sunday morning graveyard shift and I'd sleep like all day and then I'd get up and drink a cup of coffee and then have Monday off and I'd come back Tuesday um, and I started staying up all night every night and I'm an extreme morning person like I, I get up at 3 a.m. usually or 1 a.m. you know um, and I'd show up and I'd just be tired on the cash register and when I was counting my vault drops like 
someone would give me a hundred dollar bill and I didn't quite have money to give them forty dollars they'd want sixty dollars or something all right they'd want thirty dollars some crap like that happens all the time because we have construction workers and they have hundred dollar bills and they come in they do their work crew stuff and they pay for gas and there's so many of them that you can afford to vend money out of the safe to first you have to safe drop a hundred dollar bill so that it goes through the bill checker reader to make sure that it's not a fake and then once the machine accepts it then if your cash register has change for whatever they bought you can just give them change out of the cash register but if you're down to like 30 bucks and you owe them like 60 bucks you can vend out 60 dollars and just save the receipt and do a vault drop later to pay that back well i do a lot of that on tuesdays it seemed like and I, especially when I was working Tuesdays day shift, I was working Tuesdays swing shift, but day shift, I was just still tired because I'm going back to like a normal schedule already. I only felt normal on Thursdays. Uh, <laughs> by the way, like it took all week to go from my two graveyard shifts to feeling like a normal human waking up. I'd wake up at like eight in the morning, like normal, like it was as normal as I've ever been uh, about waking and sleeping. Um, since I generally just wake up at 3 a.m. and I'm ready to go. <clears throat> this whole thing has just gotten me off kilter. But I'd count my money and I'd put like an extra $20 bill in there. I'd spoke, I'd need to vault drop $60 and I'd vault drop $80 but call it $60. So there'd be this money missing and I'd just be like $20 short. I wouldn't know. I'd say, yeah, I know I'm not stealing. Okay. They never know it. You hardly ever think anyone's even possibly stealing and no one I've never seen anybody accused of stealing um, I know it happens in our industry but I never got accused of stealing they're just like you need to be accurate well they weren't telling me all year that they were finding extra $20 bills in my vault drop envelopes and then one day I get in a conversation with the other person who's trained as an assistant manager manager about like oh wow I, you know I'd always just be off on Tuesdays and I couldn't figure it out and she's and she goes, oh, yeah, you put an extra 20 in your envelope. I go, what? I was just waiting to get fired. I thought you guys were nice to me because I was so good at, with customer service or something. And, like, I cleaned the toilets really well or, like, took the trash out more quickly. <laughs> I had this functional fiction going on in my mind about why I wasn't getting fired or written up. But, you know, I wasn't getting fired or written up because the numbers were actually there. My money was actually there every time. So, uh yeah, so yesterday, I ended the save, and we were $63. There was $63 to drop still, so I knew immediately. I said, oh, wait, how much was your drop? 63 So I wrote 63 down and then did the calculations of what it was going to be, and it was off by $0.87 cents from what I calculated it was going to be, which would have been great to give the manager an $0.87 cents off day when she shows back up on Monday, and I was there, the person on Sunday... Um, now like coming to the end of this training period, it's like, okay, now you're supposed to be accurate while well, I was jumping into it a little bit early. I just was thinking backwards from the paperwork rather than thinking about what we do all year. Close the shift, <laughs> cash register and safe, and then close the day on the, on the cash register and the safe. And then that's it. And get the Vitor meter. Make sure you get a print out of the lottos. And make sure you count the scratchers and the cigarettes. And that's it. That's a gas station day close with a f initial shift close. So it's so all these little things. You can get into the gas station rocket science. I mean, and, and it is. There's like all these little things you can do. It's just that you can also very easily confuse yourself and goof something up in the early morning. Um, and little things will throw off my track of what I'm thinking. I'm walking in the door like, all right, here's what I'm going to do. And the girl who's been there all night just immediately tells me the story about this this guy who came in and did something weird like just right before I got there. And so I'm like listening to her emotionally about like, oh, are you all right? You know, not thinking with my mathematical mind. That's probably more why I actually glitch on what I should do is something like that because it's two different it's two different parts. Like people said it to me in the Marines that I didn't care enough about the guys we were in our company with. I didn't not care. I felt that we really had to do our jobs accurately and be harder of people so that we would 
be the type of Marines where we'd stay alive, right? Like, it was just my philosophy. We were always in training or just, like, on duty, and we weren't ever deployed. And I was only a reservist. I was an Abrams tank mechanic. Uh, I left the youth ministry and substitute teaching football coaching to join the Marines. So I didn't think that I needed to coddle everybody. Apparently, in our modern generation, you have to, like, be really interested in people's entire life stories and what's going on with their entire families. So, like, just was matter of fact about a lot of stuff. I don't think I was 100% that way, but I'd, I'd expect guys to run harder or whatever, or get right up out of bed, be like, Terry Tate, office linebacker, first thing in the morning, like, woo! You know, no, and a lot of people are not that way, not the way I am. I can't, I can't do it at, around anybody. I can't, I can't be how I actually am. People freak out. Ask, like, the cops ask me what drugs I'm on. Uh, if I ever get drunk and get in a fight and get arrested, they always think I'm on drugs. Um, you know, over the years, they've asked me that a lot of times. I guess they ask people that, you know, balancing a lot of different life situations has not always been easy for me. And I drank to deal with how I felt, uh, irritated, and then I'd get in fights while drunk. I was already, like, in these tension rolling arguments and shit with people. So now I don't do that, but like I will overthink some crap. So I'm like listening to the girl at the cash register. Cause that's someone who chivalry tells me that's someone to listen to where a chivalry does not tell me to listen to somebody else. Who's one of your brothers at arms because they shouldn't have something to need you to listen to. That's what it is. It's like categorically. I don't have a category for that when we're not like, we're not in combat. We're like in Kentucky, you know? On Fort Knox, working on machines. Like, what? You're supposed to be into this same shit. Get the fuck out of bed. But now, I'm a kinder, nicer, gentler James Polk. <laughs> oh, be nice, though, will screw me up on my numbers. And, you know, I mean, it happened at the golf course. I went out when this guy rolled his cart. <clears throat> the manager sent me out there and said, these guys rolled one of their carts. And I don't know why they have three carts and they're only three guys. Because I gave them each a cart because they asked for one because they were already drinking. I was, like, trying to be cool with these guys when I was, like, 23. And I was the outside service supervisor. I gave them each a cart and let them take their own 18 packs in their golf bags. Like, I haven't always – it's hard. It's a hard thing to tell people no to their partying and stuff, even if I'm not trying to participate with them. You know, I always want to be cool about shit, but – uh, you have to put up a little bit of a wall, right? And like tell people no. They